Hi everyone, this is Nusra, the chemistry tutor at Tutopia. Today we are going to study about the structure of matter. So the first subtopic that we have in this lesson is the planetary model of the atom. So an atom can be compared to the planetary model, the solar system. So the planetary model of the atom was first introduced by the scientist called Ernest Rutherford. And then this structure is similar to the solar system where the planets revolve around the sun. So if we are further speaking about the structure of an atom, right in the middle, we have the nucleus, which is concentrated by the subparticles, protons and neutrons. And around the nucleus, we have the electrons revolving in the orbitals. So here we have the electrons, which are revolving in the nuclear, uh, around the nucleus in the orbital. So here, the nucleus can be compared to the sun, whereas these electrons can be compared to the planets so that this structure is compared in short to the solar system. And this structure was further elaborated by the scientist Niels Bohr. When we have to speak about the atomic number, we have to know about the subparticles of an atom, which we just spoke in our previous slide. So when the nucleus is concentrated, we have the subparticles, protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So these two subparticles are called nucleons. And then we have electrons revolving around the nucleus again. So they do travel in an imaginary path called energy level or orbitals. Here we have the electrons. So now, just before speaking about the atomic number, we have to know the relationship between these subparticles that are proton, neutron, and electron. So protons are always positively charged subparticles, whereas neutrons are neutral, they are uncharged and electrons are negatively charged particles. And it's obvious that for an atom, for an atom, the number of protons will always be equal to the number of electrons unless it's an ion. So when it is an atom, the number of protons will always be equal to the number of electrons. So in this case over here, we have one, two, three, four electrons. So for sure, the number of protons that we should have in our nucleus has to be four. Then the neutrons, the number of neutrons, it may differ, it may be five, it may be six, that differs, that depends on some factors we are not going to study now. And then now, when we have to define the atomic number, the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom of the element. Again, the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom of the element. Even though the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, even though it is similar, we are not going to define atomic number using the number of electrons. It's because when an atom becomes an ion, the number of electrons differ. In that case, when it is an iron, the number of protons are not equal to the number of electrons. An iron is an atom which is charged. It can be either positively charged or negatively charged. So atomic number will always be defined using the number of protons and then atomic number of an element is a unique characteristic of that element. For an example, the atomic number of hydrogen will be one. So for any other elements, we will not have the atomic number one. Uh, for helium, the atomic number will be two, lithium, the atomic number will be three. So when we are moving through the periodic table, we can observe the trend of the atomic number the elements in the periodic table are arranged 
in the increasing order of the atomic number. So the first element will have the atomic number of one. The 16th element in the periodic table will have the atomic number of 16. The eighth element of the periodic table will have the atomic number of eight. So it's really simple. Since we have now studied about the atomic number, next we are going to focus on the mass number. Mass number is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom is called the mass number. All right, so protons and neutrons together, they are called the nucleons. So these nucleons, this number of nucleons are the number of uh, the number of nucleons is the mass number in short. So for an example, when an atom has five protons, then for sure that atom will have five electrons. There will be five electrons in that atom. And then let's say the given number of neutrons are six. In this case, the atomic number will be five, it's because we know the atomic number is the number of protons. What about the mass number? Take like a few seconds and work it out. Okay, so mass number is the number of protons and the number of neutrons, the sum of number of protons plus neutrons. So in total, it gives me 11. So the mass number for this particular atom is 11. All right. So over here it is given when the element is this chemical symbol for the element is X, for an example, we will write the mass number over here and atomic number here. Mass number in the top, atomic number in the bottom. So atomic number again is simply the number of protons. Mass number is the sum of number of protons and number of neutrons. So the standard method of writing the writing an element, the method of writing an element, the standard symbol, the standard way is the element along with its atomic number and the mass number over here. For an example, if we have hydrogen, the atomic number is one the mass number is one. If you have carbon, the atomic number is six, mass number is 12. So this will be considered as the standard way to write the symbol for an atom, including the atomic number and mass number. Moving ahead, we have an interesting topic that is isotopes. So what are isotopes? Isotopes are the elements with the same atomic number but different mass number. So looking over here, we, we can see we have two elements, both are X. Here we have 12 as our atomic number, but 21 as our mass number and 23 as our mass number here. So these two elements are isotopes because their atomic number is the same, but the mass number now differs. And then what makes this mass number to differ? If the mass number is the sum of number of protons and the number of neutrons. In that case, for sure, if the, if the atomic number is 12, if the atomic number is 12, we know atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So if the atomic number is 12, we know the number of protons, it's 12. So for the first element, for the first element, the number of protons is 12 and the number of neutrons, we still don't know about that, but the mass number is 21. The mass number is 21. So the number of neutrons in this case has to be, let it out. Yes, it's nine. So the number of neutrons in the first case is nine. Whereas for the second element, 
If the mass number is 23, it has to be mm -hmm, elevated. So yes, the number of proton neutrons here is elevated. So isotopes are the elements with the same atomic number but different mass number. And the reason for differing the mass number now here is the number of neutrons, the different number, different number of neutrons. All right, moving ahead, we are going to speak about the electronic configuration. Just before speaking about the electronic configuration, we are going to do an interesting thing. That is, we are going to take two isotopes and work out the number of particles that we can see in each of them, because this kind of questions are usually frequently asked so X and X, this time it's 50, 30, 50, 31. So the isotope X15 and 30, X15 and 31, the number of electrons, number of protons, number of neutrons in each of them. If you are interested in working this out, Please go ahead just before I'm telling the answer here. So yes, now we are good to check about this. If the, if the atomic number is 15, for sure the number of protons is 15 then yes, we know the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons. So we have 15 over here. And the mass number is 30. 30 has to be made up of protons and neutrons. We have 15 protons. So to make up 30, we have to have 15 neutrons. And coming over here, the same thing, 15 electrons, 15 protons. But this time it's 31. So 15, just to make 31, we have to have 16 neutrons. All right, that's, an, that's a simple activity that we did on isotopes. Now we are going to speak about the electronic configuration. So representing how electrons are filled in the respective energy levels from the one nearest to the nucleus. So let me do that. If this is the nucleus, this can be the energy level that is closer to the nucleus. And here comes our second energy level. So electronic configuration is writing the order of electrons from the nucleus and outwards. For an example, in the first energy level, the maximum number of electrons that we can fill is two. So the two will be written first and the maximum number of electrons that can be filled in our second energy level is, yes, I heard you, it's eight, so eight. So writing this arrangement of electrons in the orbital is called the electronic configuration. And here, over here, the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated by each orbitals are given. K is the first energy level, first orbital, first energy level. This is K, this is L, and then our third energy level, which I haven't drawn over here is M. So the maximum that can be filled in our third energy level is still H. So for an element, for an element, for an element which has, um, let's say 11 electrons, how can we write the electronic configuration? It will be two, eight, and one. It's because the maximum number of electrons that can be filled in the first energy level is two, and that is filled. The second energy level, it's eight, and it is already filled. So altogether now we have 10 electrons. The last one electron will be filled in the last orbital. Calcium, which has 20 electrons. Let's try writing the electronic configuration. It's two, eight, so already 10. Again, the eight maximum of eight, so 18, 
the rest two goes to the fourth energy level. So these elements are given in the increasing order of the atomic number. So the number of electrons can be guessed. I recommend all of you to work out on writing the electronic configuration. That's it from me for today. Let's meet in another session. Thank you all.